All right, everybody. Reality Rally, Rob Sister, and, and look who's here. We're here with the specialist himself, Philip Shepard. Hey, it's great to be here, Rob. Yeah. And now, if anybody is worried about anything, I know everybody doesn't want to be spoiled. Uh, Phil Philip is under very tight restrictions here from CBS today. He will he will not reveal anything, nor will we ask him to about the current season of Survivor. So don't worry about any. Uh, any spoiler type stuff. That's right. Because this is all about, you know, supporting Jillian's effort here with Michelle's place. Yeah. I came out in 2011 to support it. As you know, my mother succumbed to cancer many years ago when I was a young man. And anything I can do to help make the lives of those women uh, who have breast cancer, who are going through a tough time having chemotherapy, I'm here to support them in that effort and, and that's all I'm here for to do and I'm really excited that Jillian asked me to come out again. Yeah. And Philip has a very high government uh, level of security so we know he is very good with secrets. That's right. Very tight lipped. That's right. Yeah. I, and and Philip not only uh, is going to run the reality rally race today, he is running with the Rob has a podcast team. That's right. That we raised a thousand dollars and we we're able to choose our reality star and we said give us the specialist. That's right and he's going to give it all. Yes. I'm looking so forward to participating with Jessica Frey. I remember I met her last year, and we're going to kick some butt here this year. Yeah. What do you think of the name Stealth R-H-A-P? I love that name <laughs> because it, it implies that we're going to be Thank in you. ghost stealth mode. <laughs> we're going to come in from behind probably with these young bloods out here, and, and, and we're going to win this thing. It's a joint mission. That's right. It's a joint mission. Yeah. All right. So, Philip, tell us a little bit about you different from – how are, are you the, the man – different than the specialist that we see on TV. Are you the specialist in real life, or are you just the specialist on Survivor? Well, I would say that in terms of when you look at what your life is about, your life is always about encounters with new people. Um, if you're out and about every single day, you know, you're always meeting new people, and you're gauging them where they're at. And so what it is to be the specialist is that unique ability to understand what's happening in your surroundings and making a judgment call, as Holly mentioned in the forward of my book. Uh, when I come out to these events. So on Survivor, you're, you're dealing with a subset of individuals every single day. And so you're making a call about how you're going to interface with them every single day because you're in a competitive situation with them. In our daily lives, we're not competing with every single person we come in contact with. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest distinction. In Survivor, I'm out to put you down for the count. In real life, I want to embrace you. I want to show you a lot of love. And if you're working with me in Survivor, I'm prepared to do that too. But in Survivor, ultimately, there can only be one sole survivor, <laughs> and the specialist wants to be that. The specialist wants to be it. Uh, I hear from a lot of people, you, you're very polarizing, I, I feel like. There's, there's people that you, there are big fans of yours, and then a lot of people, especially on the Internet, say, oh, there's too much Philip on, on this season. Can there ever be enough Philip? Well, you know, the answer to the first part of that, when you say I'm polarizing, you know, for me, that's an adjective that describes how other people are viewing you rather than necessarily how you are. I would I would argue that, you know, particularly in Survivor, people, I'm frankly misunderstood. Yeah. They don't, they, they misunderstand that my goal is similar to theirs. I want to win a million dollars. So if they have to be eliminated from the game or, you know, not allowed to join our alliance, and, you know, that's what I'm prepared to do because uh, I want to win a million dollars. So, um you know, the fact that different people have different perceptions of me, obviously they're pulling and they're rooting for a particular individual. And if that individual goes home and they don't like how the circumstances that led to that, I can fully understand their position. I don't happen to agree with it because, after all, I am the specialist. <laughs> I'm a right. character. Yeah. Now, you've uh, spoken a lot during the season about the BR rules. Have you uh, – has Boston Rob been in contact with you to say, Hey, Philip, thanks, thanks for the shout-out. I appreciate it. Here's what I want to say about that. All I will say is in terms of the BR rules, it's very similar when you have a child who goes and takes a lesson. Yeah. And he comes home and he says, Mom, I studied. You did? Well, that's wonderful, son. Why don't you tell me what you studied? We studied history. So who's the first president of the United States? George Washington. Who's the second president? Adams. Who's the third president? Jefferson. Who's the fourth president? Madison, if he can answer those questions, you know he did his homework and he learned something out there. Right. I think I was misunderstood when I played with, with Boston Rob in terms of the way we played that season, in terms of how people thought I was understanding my understanding of the game. And I was just demonstrating uh, that I understand the game and that I could take uh, a few lessons from the master. Yeah. 
And so I would comment further that we're involved in this season, and I can't go any further than that. All right, so, this, so you can't tell us if you're following the BR rules close enough that you end up in the finals with – a, with a girl, you will not propose during a finale. I leave that. That's the R rules. I would say to you, <laughs> I would um, never propose to someone All right. under those circumstances. Okay, good, good, to, good to know. It's already been done. Yeah. Now <laughs> tell us, uh, we uh, we have, we uh, fo anybody who follows you on Twitter knows that you have a book, yes. the specialist colon the Costa Rica job. That's correct. Uh, when did you uh? Was this a story that you had from before you started uh, playing Survivor and then finally had the means to put on paper? Well, you know, first of all, I didn't actually write the novel. My, my, my brother, Charles Peterson Shepard, wrote it. He's a wonderful writer. He was an editor at UCLA when he went to school there. And he and I have bounced around ideas for years. I'm a retired United States Army specialist believe it or not yeah and so we've always played around with that idea with me being a former federal agent but you know when you look at publishing today and we see how difficult it is that people have actually turned to self-publishing that gave me the opportunity to actually now bring that dream forward in the sense that i am a celebrity or personality on survivor people know who i am so being able to put my image out there on the cover of a book with great content i knew it was going to give me an opportunity to do that so we we were able to complete the book from uh, June of 2011 to, to basically February of this year. Now, are there any talks for a movie of the specialist colon the Costa Rica job? I have two visions for it. Actually, we've got a second book we're in the writing right now. It's going to be a total of three books initially. Uh, the next one takes place in Africa. But right now, we're, we're, we're just trying to make sure this book is a bestseller. It's number 70 on the most gifted items in Canada. It's, it's number one for my publisher. Uh, Archway Simon Schuster in Japan. I understand about all the books that they they offer in that country. An international hit. That's right. And you can buy it in in, in, in Brazil. You can get a in, in South Africa. You can get it in Australia. Australians, you know, are tweeting about the fact they've gotten a book with a photograph of themselves. I give them a name, you know, to be a member, honorary member of Stealth R Us. Um, I am actually, in fact, hoping and praying that at some point I can have conversations not only for a movie but potentially a television show. I don't necessarily be, need to star in the in that production. But uh, I think it's it's worthy of a you know someone if I dare say like a Tyler Perry. There's a gentleman I I really like a lot as an actor, a guy named Michael Coulter could easily play 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 the specialist. Now, is the specialist does the specialist look like you? Well, on the cover of the book, obviously he, he has my inspiration. He has my persona. When you're reading the book, um, you get a sense of who I am as a person. Yeah. Uh, because. You know, he's very similar in my background, but it's a character in a novel. But is the character named Philip Shepard? No, the character's name is uh, Philip, and he goes by the name The Specialist. Okay. You'll hear the name Shepard in there, but never the two together. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, will there be more specialist books, and will future books have characters such as the Intelligentsia Attaché, uh, True Grit, uh, probably not uh, the... <laughs> dominatrix uh <laughs> but actually the, 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 the even with the current novel it's not based on anything relative to stealth stealth r us that is a uh, an entity that i created within the body of the show uh yeah. you know cbs basically utilizes that and they're promoting stealth r us and you know i did that in the show but in the novel itself we don't have any titles like that we actually have real individuals uh the, the book has a premise in costa rica the, the, you know, there's some operatives, operations going there right now under the premise that we've put in the story uh, for that we're, you know, we're working with the Israeli government, for example, and the CIA. Uh, not directly, but that's just some of the things that we knew that were going on in Costa Rica, so we incorporated that into the novel. Whereas Stealth R Us is something that's only incorporated in the show Survivor. How do you come up with a good Stealth R Us nickname? Like, uh, what's, take us through the thought process behind how, how you come up with these nicknames. Well, there's, well that's funny. You know, um, I would say to you... Um, can't speak to the season like how I came up with the names for those folks in the season. And we okay. can talk about that at a later date. But I'll tell you what I typically do is I'll go on the website and read about somebody yeah. who wants me to give them a name and they purchase a copy of my book and they, they float a photo of them holding the book. Then I, I read a little bit about them and then I come up with the name like the bold one. You know, somebody who's demonstrated, you know, they really wanted the book. They've had a lot of interaction with me. They, they keep after me in a certain kind of way. I'll give them a name like that. Um, I've got a, uh, a lady who bought the book. I call her the mother one, 
because of the way she described herself, you know, and yeah. and, and and what I read about her on on on, uh, on Facebook and, and other places. So I don't just throw a name out. I try to get a little bit of information if I can. How often do people ask you, Philip? Can I have a nickname? Can you give me a nickname? I've probably given out about 800 names so far. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, so it's like I'm asked often and a lot. I've probably been asked maybe 30 times here what? at Reality Rally. What's my nickname? My my uh, nickname is uh, the Rob that sucks. Can I? Can we improve on that? Can we get a better Stealth R Us nickname? Well, if I was to give you a name based on what I know from their different the podcast, you know your website. Uh, your ability to talk about all the the, the different uh, reality shows, I would give you, I'd give you a, a very distinct name. Okay. The real one. The, the real. <laughs> no. No, that, guy, that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and what but I mean by because I like to tell them what it means. And the reason I say it's the real one because a lot of times when people, and one of the reasons I love you know participating in your show when you've asked me to do it, there's a way that you ask questions that allows the person who they really are, both inside the game and outside the game, to be revealed. Okay, well, I, I, I'm just worried that if you call me the real one, then BR might be offended that you he might think that you're calling me the real Rob as opposed to the Rob that sucks. Uh, you know, the thing about Boston Rob is he's very, very uh, secure. Don't, don't switch that off. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Uh, the, you know, the real Boston Rob, I would say, in terms of uh, – you know, his name, as you know, within the course of the show, was called The Mentalist. Uh, he has the ability to understand that there's no comparison to him in terms of his name versus your name. Okay, very good. All right, Philip. best of luck today in the Reality Rally. Best of luck uh, on the rest of Survivor Caramoan. Yes. And uh, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.